throwing events had their origins in ancient warfare. The javelin and discus from Grecian weaponry, the shot put and hammer throw descended from medieval weapons of war. Throwing events rely on balance, agility and strength. In just a few steps or body rotations, the athlete must go from a static position to the utmost expression of power and effort. Throwing events have been the Cinderella, I guess, of track and field, but where uh, I think with uh, better TV coverage, we're able to see the finesse involved in throwing events much more easily. And when you get the super slow-mo coverage of the throws, people can really appreciate it. Ideal throwing physique for the different throws relies pretty much on the same sort of characteristics. Coordination, speed, mobility, balance and strength. There's a lot of finesse in the throws as well as the strength, so they're going to become more and more popular as we get more and more medals. The first consideration in the throwing events is safety. Just as they were once considered weapons, the javelin, shot put, hammer and discus can still be dangerous if care isn't taken. There are often many events running concurrently at track and field meetings, and although the officials are in control, safety is every athlete's personal concern. It's important for the athlete to be aware of throwing into a clear throwing area, that he, he or she don't throw while there's somebody in the landing area, important also to be aware that their equipment is in a safe condition, that it doesn't break during the throw. Mike Edwards is the throws coordinator for hammer and shot put with the Victorian Institute of Sport. Mike works with a number of promising young athletes, training them to state and national competition level. Obviously the athlete attempting the throwing events has to be fit. They have to always carry out a warm-up procedure prior to throwing, so this involves stretching exercises and a gradual warm-up of muscles, so we have a number of drills to perform prior to the actual throwing process taking place. With discus drills, it's important to get each part of the body prepared for the, the combined throw. In throwing events, the slower moving big muscles are used first to build momentum, with the smaller fast twitch muscles giving drive in the final power position and release. The athlete did some step back procedures which are preparing the hips and arm and shoulders to get in the appropriate position just prior to delivery. It's a good drill for balance and maintaining the position of the feet to establish a good throw. Control of the flight of the discus is important. Holding the discus by the fingertips, flight control is by pressing down of the thumb when the discus is about to leave the, the fingertips. The discus is slightly held against the wrist on the back swing so that holds it in place. The centrifugal force of the movement of the arm will hold it in the horizontal plane for release. And you'll notice the discus exit the hand over the index finger. This drill enables the athlete to practice the discus coming off the front finger. One aspect of throwing that is to be avoided is for the discus to come out of the back of the hand. This drill, again, is to assist the discus coming off the index finger. Just roll it straight along the ground. There are also standing throws that position the athlete in the power position prior to the release of the discus. The athlete comes to the front of the circle and assumes the power position with a swing back of the arms, shoulders rotate. This second drill establishes some linear momentum 
It's a simple step back drill. Position in the center of the circle, movement of the discus, to step and throw. The discus throw has three stages. Building momentum, where the large leg and trunk muscles build up power through the turn. The momentum transfers into the double support, or power phase, with both feet on the ground. Power is delivered from the legs and trunk with a final flick of the arm. The flight and recovery phase refers to the control by the hand and finger positions on the discus and the recovery of balance to keep the athlete inside the circle. Development of momentum, for instance, in the discus throw starts from those initial preliminary swings when the athlete takes the discus back behind and there's a transition phase into the turn. So momentum starts from that initial swing back and then continues right through until the athlete lands in the centre of the circle and is in the power position. And then there's the drive from, if it's a right-handed throw, drive from the right side of the body up until the arm, arm extension, shoulder input to the release. Entry to the circle is from the rear half and the athlete positions feet apart, pivot on the left toe, middle and reach back. Balance is over the left side, pivoting on the left toe to the middle hip drive and a final flick on release. The throwing circle is marked by a metal rim or white line. Once the athletes have entered the circle and begin a throw, they must not touch the ground outside the circle until the discus has landed. This makes the final part of the throw, the recovery, especially important to avoid being fouled. The aim in shot put is to propel a solid metal ball through the air for maximum distance. The shot must be pushed from the shoulder using one arm only. It cannot be thrown. A shot putter, his main attribute would be strength, but he also needs to be fast, mobile and well balanced. And I guess a characteristic that is applicable to all throwers is rhythm. All, all of the throws require a good feel of rhythm. As with all sports, the first stage is to warm up and stretch the muscles. These overhead drills assist in leg power and arm extension. So it's a warm-up drill that uh, assists in warming the athlete up. Second drill involves strong leg extension and upper body reach. Assists in leg drive for the shot sequence. After several warm-up throws, the athlete moves on to perform a series of drills, practicing each part of the throw. The first drill is a single step into the power position to create some linear movement. You're dropping your left shoulder a bit, try and keep shoulder up, chest up. Follow through and aim for a prominent feature there, the top of the stands a bit tighter, so just try and keep the shot up and fire. Okay. The second drill is a static throw from the power position.
As the athlete puts all the drills together for a complete throw, he must remember three things. Clean palm, dirty neck, elbow up. The shot put starts at the rear of the circle, with the athlete's back towards the marked throwing sector, holding the shot in the fingers of the throwing hand. This is the clean palm. And resting the hand against the shoulder with the shot under the chin, the dirty neck. In the first stage, building momentum, the athlete sets the driving leg by lifting and dropping the balancing leg. Timing the drive with the bounce, the athlete drives off one leg in a shifting glide to the center circle. With both feet in the double support power phase, he rotates the hips and upper body to face forward and puts the shot with an explosive vertical straightening of legs, body and arm and a final flick of the fingers. If the contestant steps outside the circle or touches the top of the stop board, the throw is disallowed. The javelin is a steel-tipped metal spear with a minimum length of 260 centimetres for men and 220 centimetres for women. The event involves total body activity which requires speed, strength, flexibility and coordination. The grip on the javelin is important. Placement of the binding down the palm of the hand and there are three alternative grips. The first one with the index finger and thumb around the binding. The second is the Swedish grip with the finger down the back of the javelin. Third is the hook grip. There are three common elements to all of the throwing events and initially it's development of momentum. We look secondly for the power position and then uh, the release and recovery aspects. Power position in the javelin relates to the reversed C, the back of the athlete's leg running back up to the upper arm holding the javelin. So you see that reverse C position in the throwing sequence. In the first stage of the throw, building momentum, the contestants grip the javelin near its centre of gravity and sprint toward a check mark. As they near the mark, they twist to one side, draw back the javelin, putting the torso under torque and prepare to throw. In order to maintain running speed while leaning back for the throw, they execute a hop or fast cross step. Near the throw line, the athlete pivots forward into the double support power phase rotates the hips, torso, shoulder and arm abruptly and hurls the javelin into the air with a final flick of the hand. The turbo jab is an alternative piece of equipment that uh, is ideal for use in indoors or in confined spaces but it simulates the flight and feel of the javelin. Throwers compete by hurling a heavy ball weighing between 4 and 7.2 kilograms attached to a 1.2 meter length of wire with a metal handle. Hammer throwers are usually strong, but success in the event also requires timing, coordination, balance and speed. In training, the hammer throw is practiced in its three elements. Building momentum, 
the power position and the recovery. In the first drill, building momentum, the athlete practices groups of four rotations. Gripping the handle with both hands, one over the other and keeping the feet stationary, the athlete whirls the ball around in a circle passing above and behind the head and to a low point at about ankle height. In the second drill, the athlete combines the momentum build-up with a single heel and toe turn and release. It's helpful to mark out the foot positions inside the circle. The turn sequence is heel-toe of the left foot, the right foot being the power side of the throw, coming around, preferably under turning each turn. In a full hammer throw, the power phase is a three turn body rotation, synchronized with the speed of the hammer. In the throw, the athlete aims to accelerate the hammer head throughout the throw, so it's going fast as possible on release. Angle of release is approximately 45 degrees. It's important to transfer the weight on the pivoting foot evenly from heel to toe. There are small uh, items that give you very good clues. For instance, this is a hammer shoe and the thrower needs to turn on the heel and toe of his shoe. And if, if there's a wear pattern, as there is on this one, you can see very easily that he's turning correctly.